Welkom in Costa. Het cultureel ontmoetingscentrum van uh, Sint en Dries. Het concept is heel eenvoudig. Namelijk onze artiesten in kwestie doen in het eerste deel hun goesting. Hun goesting, dat kan echt alles zijn. Maar het is waarschijnlijk iets dat jullie niet verwachten, dat wij niet verwachten. Dat kan zijn dat ze hier gedichtjes gaan brengen. Het zou kunnen dat ze hier wat gaan dansen. Het zou kunnen dat jullie over een kwartier Polonaise aan het doen zijn. We weten het niet. Als je nu zegt, oh, ik had er toch iets anders van verwacht. Geen probleem. Op de tafels liggen papiertjes en bikken. En daar kunnen jullie tijdens de pauze vragen en verzoekjes opschrijven. En die vragen en verzoekjes worden dan behandeld in het tweede deel. Dus het tweede deel hangt volledig van jullie af. Beste mensen, mag ik een gigantisch warm applaus voor een dame waar ik ongelooflijk fier op ben dat we ze eindelijk hebben kunnen strikken. Ze is een wereldster. Dat we zeggen, toetoe poe. Nooit voor een concert, maar ik ben zo nerveus, dus ik ga een klein slakje. Want ik heb geen idee wat er gebeurt. Hallo.
resonates with me um, you know people have taken the poems of the great poem po uh, poets like the Emily Dickinson's and them but um, it can be uh, very abstract and very far away from my own experience now to read poetry written by a young black South African woman um, truly resonated with a lot of my own personal experiences so we took some of her poems and wrote music to it. And um, I would like to play one for you now. Um, the way we love. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> okay, we play something else and then we play that one. <laughs> Should I tell him what you're saying? Why are you saying no? Because he thinks that they're kind of similar. They're good. But they're completely two different songs. <laughs> now this is a first. <laughs> okay, what do you want to play? <laughs> Inside, outside. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, let's do inside, outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, inside, outside. Yeah, that's interesting. Because she was born in the United States by two black South African parents. And then when she was in her teenage years, I think 14, 15, they moved back to South Africa. So you can imagine the the shock and the, the, the culture differences that she had to go through. And it resonates with me in a strange way because I was born and raised in South Africa and only when I was 23, I got a scholarship to go study in Den Haag. 
And studying in Den Haag, I met a young man. He invited me to his home for a rehearsal in Oud Heverle, and I never left. <laughs> so, um, and then we got married and we have two children and now we're still playing together. <laughs> and for the first time he tells me no, <laughs> in front of an audience. Um, so, I, it, that, this poem, Inside Outsider, I've been living outside South Africa now for 16, 17 years. So this, this poem really, I could really um, relate to what the poetry is all about.
of my tribe I'll build it from the shreds of boxes With my own hands
confused because I thought that the song we just played was the one that I wanted to play, but I called it something else. <laughs> That's the problem. That's why I said no. <laughs> okay. So, what is the one you said no to? The way we love. Okay, then let's play that one. <laughs> <laughs>
soy To remember themselves Para papá bandé in the music school in Kapstadt. And we begin on summer to spiele in Kapstadt and Jack said, you're a great singer, come, let's go to, to Europe and play with some cats in Europe. So he invited me to come with him to Den Haag and we played in the Hopper with Dre Palamat and all the old fantastic musicians like Hein van der Gein and, 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 and Hans van Oosterhout and all the super, super lekker mensen. And then, and then I was finished studying in Kapstadt, and I knew that I didn't want to move to Johannesburg. But I didn't know, I, I wanted to be a jazz singer. And I knew that moving to Johannesburg, I would have to be, end up becoming a pop singer, which is what happened to a lot of people, which is fine, but that's not what I wanted. And then Jack said, okay, we're gonna get you a scholarship to Den Haag to go study in Den Haag. So I just grabbed the opportunity with both hands. And coming to Europe, knowing that you're going to go back home, that's fun. It's like, I'm going to Europe, mom, see ya. You know? And you know you're coming back in two weeks. But this time, um, I was excited, of course, but then on the day that I left, I'll never forget, I was in the, in the line to go inside the plane and I kept moving backwards. 
I kept moving backwards and I was imagining all the scenarios like, okay, if I decide I don't want to go, what's going to happen? They're going to find me for wasting their time. They have to get my luggage out. Jack is going to be super angry at me. But I kept moving back towards the end of the road until I was the very last person to step on the train and I was crying because I was leaving for a whole year to the unknown, you know? And I got to Den Haag, I knew I had to get on that plane and go because this was an opportunity to study for one year in Den Haag. And Den Haag was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just, it didn't, I didn't, um, like I say, when you come to visit, you are still the only black person around, and that's fine, you go back home, but you really live there and just feel being alone. I was 23, 22, 23, and then in Den Haag I would see other black people, and like in South Africa, I would smile, <laughs> and I got nothing back. And it was, I was depressed, it was really bad. Anyway, Den Haag was horrible. <laughs> Out Haverly, like I said, I went to this big house. Oh, I tell you a story. <laughs> so Jack, to a little bit background, Jack wanted to start uh, who's it, uh, like an um, exchange program with students uh, from here and then students at Kapstadt in the conservatory in Kapstadt. And that was fantastic. So he started with a girl called Chantal Willy. Prachtig musicant. This girl could sing and the heavens opened. And she was really, really talented. You can tell them how talented. And Chantal, she started to play bass here in the Conservatorium van Antwerpen. And she picked it up really quick and she became super great with the bass. And then she had a band, her own band, and Ewart was the pianist for Chantal. And then Chantal started to get, uh, she got booked by Zap Mama. And she became the bassist for Zap Mama. So Chantal started traveling the whole world with Zap Mama. And then she called me, she said, hey, I have this little band, but I'm going to New York next week. Can you come over, when I was in Den Haag, can you come over to Antwerp and replace me in this band? So I said, cool. <laughs> so I came over and Eve Peters, a drummer, he lives in Ghent, he picked me up at the station. And he said to me, yeah, it's Per's birthday today. Per, Per, Per. He's talking about Per, Per. Yeah, Per is turning 30 years old today. Per, Per. I don't know who Per is. <laughs> so we arrive at this ginormous house in Out Haverlet, and I think, Per is 30. This must be Per's house. <laughs> and, there, and then he says, ah, yeah. And yeah, Ewart got a new car. I don't know who Ewart is. And I'm thinking somehow this Pair and this Ewart is the same person. I don't know why. Because I figured he's turning 30. So if you're turning 30, chances are you live in this big house. Chances are you bought a new car. So anyway. So I walk into the house and we rehearse and I meet everybody. And, and I see him and I'm like, ah, that must be Pair. He was 24, Pierre was 10 and 30. And I saw him and I was like, ah, so this is Pierre. This must be Pierre because he looked 30 at 24. <laughs> and he's the one that bought the new car. So I figured, oh, he's the one with the new car. So it's, it's him and this is his house. But then it turned out that they were renting the house. Three of them were renting the house. But I walked in there like, ah, I could do this here. Anyway, <laughs> so that was out out Haverly, and then we spent, we did the rehearsal, and the rehearsal was nice, and we spent that afternoon together, and it was as if we had known each other since forever. At least that's how I felt. It was really easy. <laughs> You have a microphone, you can tell them how you felt. <laughs> I thought it was, he was really easy to hang with. We chatted, there was lots of things to talk about. We loved the same music. Um, 
so yeah, we had a good chat, and uh, two weeks later I was back and I never left. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I liked Out Haverly better. <laughs> and also, at the beginning of the streets, there was a bakery. The best bread I've ever tasted in my whole life. <laughs> Maiz brocha. That was ex so lekker. I could still drive back there for that bread. <coughs> that was super, super. Great question. So. <laughs> Was blind. 
safe thus far and grace will lead us home. Yeah. 
your friends in a t-shirt, go open. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> name, uh, yeah, these t-shirts are made by, her name is Papama. I met her this Saturday, this past Saturday in Brussels. There was this uh, Afropolitan festival in Brussels. Um, in the Beaux-Arts. Beaux and um, I've seen these t-shirts forever on the internet over the my favorite people in South Africa are wearing it, and I was, I want a t-shirt. And then I saw she was in Brussels, I said, I'm going to get the t-shirt. <laughs> so I went to get the t-shirt. I'll find her name, I think you can buy it online, I'm not sure. Anyways, I tell her that there's people in Antwerp that want to buy a t-shirt. <laughs> and then, oh, maybe I can do a deal with her, <laughs> that, you know? that I sell them for. <laughs> and then I get my stuff half price. <laughs> Can you do a vocalise on your favorite classical hit or a piece of tooth? <coughs> No, when you mean classic, <coughs> classical hit, you don't mean classical music. You don't mean opera, no. Yes, no? It's okay. We're all friends here. You can tell us. I mean, you know all about me. I should know something about you. Yeah? Let me try and figure out. The question is, can you do a vocalise on your favorite classical hit? Classical music hit. Classical, as in, as in classical music, yes. as in. Yes. <laughs> but is it a hit? I mean, I, I, I have a classical singer because I, I believe it's good for a singing teacher. <laughs> I have a teacher, a classical. I haven't seen her in a while, but I claim her as my singing teacher um, to do classical singing because it's it's very good for your instrument. Because in classical singing, they really teach you how the voice works. With pop and jazz, you can, people hurt themselves. You know, the, the uh, what's her name? Adele, she has to cancel shows because she did something. And she, but it happens with classical singers too, but when you train as a classical singer, they really teach you how to use your voice, your instrument properly and to care for it. So a hit, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not very good, I don't know a lot about classical music. I don't know a lot. I do know this one song. Sorry, <laughs> 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 um, It's one that I learned when I was, that's the only one I can remember. Any Italians in the house? Anybody who understands Italian? Uh, okay, you can just close your ears. I learned this as a student in Cape Town. Virginia Davis taught me this song and I still remember it. <laughs>
Uh, thanks. Um, I get it gives me. I like to watch the the uh, um, clone the competition. I mean, those people are athletes. Which are elsewhere athletes, and they can. I mean. <laughs> so it takes years. I have tremendous respect for for that. So I hope that wasn't recorded. <laughs> it's not gonna go on the internet <laughs> and ruin my reputation. <laughs> so yeah, I, I but I, I feel like yeah, it gives me really a lot of joy, and I feel warm. And so I, I would like to do that. Do the simple songs, because this song is not simple. It's really, it's not, it's a hard one. But it's the only one that I kind of remember the melody and the words are shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <yeah. laughs> Ella Fitzgerald. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, what the? Do I do it?
with brown beans in water, the best way is to soak it the night before. And then you clean it, and then you cook it like, for, I cook it for like four hours on a really low, low uh, heat. Delicious. With brown, mm. with brown beans, then you cook it, you cook it, and then you put, um, you saute some onions, you put all the spices you like in the onions, and then you mix it together with the onions. <laughs> and burevorst, can you do burevorst? I said worst, but burevorst. It's really thicker and it has a, a specific texture than Yuli worst. That's heel lekker. If there is anyone who has a South African burevorst, because mm -hmm. they know by us, we know that uh, here in Antwerpen, they say. Ja, beuling. Wij, wij zijn het pensen. Ja, witte pens, zwarte pens. Dat is niet dezelfde. Nee, nee, het is niet hetzelfde. Nee, nee, het is niet hetzelfde. Maar, nee, maar Boerenvorst heeft een... Ik weet, ben er nog altijd niet achter wat dat de, 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 de kruiden zijn die erin zitten. Maar dat is een hele specifieke... Heeft iemand al beeld omgegeven? Ja. Ja, al wel veel van de flavor van gewone, ongespijste beeld om. Dat is een beetje de, de flavor dat je in Boerenvorst ook vindt. En dat, is een, dat is een specifieke kruidenmengeling. Maar ik weet niet wat onder de wat het is. Ik moet het uitzoeken naar. Elke zin. Lekker. Het is gewoon lekker. Ja, say your favorite lullaby. Ja. That you sing for your children. For a bow, especially. I used to sing. Um... Let me try again. No. <laughs> Tula, tula, na na, tula, tula, na na, tula, tula, na na, tula, 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 na na, tula, tula, na na, tula, tula, na na, tula, 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 na na, tula. Tula na na tula, tula na na tula, tula, tula na na tula, tula na na tula, tula na na tula, tula 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 sa tula, tula tula mama uzo buya. Tula tu tula na na tula sana tula tu tula mama uzo uya manga u zio u kala ma tula tula tula. Tula, 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 
in the grocery store by the ice cream place and there was another woman by the ice cream place and she was just sitting there looking at all these ice creams and I looked at her and she looks at me and we just start having this chat like we've known each other forever and that never happens here like never I mean we are friendly you guys are friendly that's true but really we sat there by the ice cream deciding which ice cream are we going to pick today? <laughs> you know, and we started talking about our weight. And she said, listen, it's December, okay? We are allowed to be fat, right? Let's just eat our ice cream. That was one lady, I'll never forget. And then on the same day, or no, maybe not the same day, and another time, I was again at the mall, at the spa in Rosebank or something, trying to get something. And I saw this woman that looked, that reminded me of my brother's wife, who is an ex-wife now. Um, she really reminded me of my ex-sister-in-law. And I saw her and I smiled, and she smiled back. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I knew you. I thought I was going to give you a hug. I thought you were my ex-sister-in-law. And she said, I'll take the hug anyway. <laughs> We don't know each other and we hugged and she wished me a Merry Christmas and a good life and it would act, I wanted to cry <laughs> coming back to Belgium. <laughs> Thank you. But I miss that very, very much. Yeah, very friendly people. You should visit. <laughs> so add something. Ik heb altijd gedacht dat ik een asociaal balken was als ik jong was. Tot ik de eerste keer in Zuid-Afrika kwam en dat ik grote alle mannen in een conversatie zag. En dat ik dacht van, ja, misschien ligt dat nu misschien niet helemaal aan mij of zo. Maar wij zijn er het algemeen wel kunnen van jullie ook maar vrij gesloten mensen. En mij valt het sinds dat ik regelmatig in Zuid-Afrika kom, bijvoorbeeld iets waar ik mijzelf kan aan storen, is dat zoals collega's van mij op school waar ik op een scheef, dat je soms de leraarskamer binnenwandelt en dan mensen die geen goede dag zeggen. Of dat je de, dat je de, de lift instapt in de, in de Albert Heijn en dat die lift staat vol en je komt binnen in die lift en iedereen krijgt gewoon sperders en juistjes. Dan konden dus in Zuid-Afrika, de eerste keer ik in de lift binnenstapte, konden dus effectief zes mensen tegen en je voelt je binnen de vier seconden raar dat je, zo, dat je precies in je eigen kool zou blijven zitten. Want iedereen lacht en iedereen zegt goeiedag en iedereen begint je tegen je te ballen. Dat is een normale zaak van de wereld. Ik vond dat echt uh, ja, nog altijd, dus sinds dat ik daar ben geweest en ik kom terug, dat zijn wel zaken die af en toe een beetje op mijn systeem Somewhere over there. you dream of once 
in a lullaby Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly And the dreams that you really do come true something like that <laughs>
Yeah, it's like from the Nguni languages, so the Zulus and the Kosas, they kind of understand each other. Um, uh, Meine Muttertal is Sebedi, which is a, a Bantu language, um, which belongs with the Swahilis because we were speaking, he was speaking some Swahili and there was a lot of words that I understood. Um, so a song in my mother tongue. This is a song we wrote, just the, f the first verse. Just one time through. Yeah, okay, we're gonna play for you something we wrote together for Panzo Doctor, Mpo, and I wrote the words in my mother tongue. Queen. Um, 
I gave her a CD. Well, we were in the Hintz Festival. What is it called? The Hintz Festival. Before it was Hintz Festival, it was. Wasn't it Blue Note? Jazz Festival, Blue Note Festival. It was the Blue Note Festival. Yeah, I think it was when it was still the Blue Note Festival. He kept a guy. I don't remember his name. Anyway, I gave this guy, he was a presenter. If I tell you his name, you will know, but I forget. I gave him a CD and I said, please give it to Diana Reeves. And I wrote a little note to tell her how much I loved her and blah, blah, blah. And I gave the guy the CD to give to Diana. And then six months later, while we were rehearsing in Cape Town, he was sitting on a chair and he's like, Dudu, you have to read this, you have to read this. And it was via on the management tune. They got an email, I got an email via on the management from Diana Reeves. And she said she really enjoyed my album. And I died. <laughs> Just to get an, uh, it was six months down the line. I figured she probably never got the CD, you know. But she did get it, and six months later, she, she sent me a note. And I remember I printed that note, and I cut it out, and I put it in my, uh, in my book. I had like a little book back then. If I find that book, that email is still there. Anyways, so me and Diane, we like sisters. <laughs> so I would love to sing with her.